I definitely think as a first time home buyer or any buyer, you're better off getting in now. Prices are going to go up. How did you get to the point you wanted to buy investment property? And then what did the process you go through? I've done a little bit of everything. Currently, my big one that I talk a lot about, which I think you're speaking about, is my Airbnb that my husband and I have in Boise um, and why we invested out of state and taking that money and putting it out of state. So we knew we wanted to do short term rental because you just make more money than long term rental. Long term rental is more of waiting on the equity. Um, so we started looking in places that we would want to like vacation to. And I started looking at landlord friendly states and then states that grew rapidly um, or areas, excuse me, that grew rapidly. Prices grew rapidly like during 2020 and 2021 and usually areas that blow up that quickly when there is a stability or a decline in the market, they tend to sometimes get hit harder because of how quickly they grew up. So we looked, we started looking in Boise. Um, I started watching just the numbers and the statistics and how rapidly the Boise area was growing and how many families were moving out there. Um, and there's a downtown and there's a college. So like for short-term rental, it makes so much sense. Um, and then I started looking at what the nightly rates were um, I used AirDNA.co to break down what the nightly rates were and what the average occupancy rate was in the area. And I was like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. And they're a super landlord friendly state, Idaho. They even have a law in place that if you have a short term rental and then say they crack down on short term rentals, you're grandfathered in. Um, so just it just made sense for us but it took us a year and a half and now my next move won't take me that long because I did so much research just to start investing in short-term rentals during that time how you manage a property from afar um different programs to sync my Airbnb so that everything flows smoothly I mean someone books the date they book the last four digits of their phone number automatically gets get to the door code I mean everything set up all my systems now I know that. So I'll be able to make moves quicker the next time. <laughs> um, but that's how we broke down why we chose investing in Boise. College towns don't feel recessions as much because they're subsidized by the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And so I still find that super interesting. Like if I were to invest, I wouldn't necessarily invest in college housing just because. Yeah. 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 But um, for teachers and people visiting and all the activities that I think it's a super smart idea to uh, Airbnb or rental property around uh, colleges. Again, just with that government subsidy, they're not going to, if they have a recession, like the government still has to fund education. Exactly. And we use a program that I highly recommend to anybody who is, um, has a short term rental or is interested. It's called Price Labs. It will go through based on the address of your property. And so like, for an example, if there's like a huge football game or whatever, you know, this week at school, you know, at colleges, we're all like the parents, parent week at school, it tells you what your nightly rate should be based on the, the how many bedrooms, how many people you can sleep in your house. So like it automatically does it. And some of those like parent weeks at Boise State, the money we make on our Airbnb is insane compared to, you know, a normal night. Yeah. So you brought up a couple of tools that you use for your Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Price Labs is one that yep. gives you pricing projections. Yep. AirDNA. AirDNA.co is a website and you have to pay them. You can go on and get some information free, but if you want to like really do a deep dive, you also have to pay for a membership. I canceled mine now that, and when we start looking again, I'll put it back you know, um, active, but it basically takes all the Airbnb and VRBO and all those like websites data and analyzes it. So you can literally type in an exact property address and it will tell you the average occupancy rate for that area. So for an example, you know, I'll do generic numbers, but say your, your nightly rate is $200 a night and your average, and it's the average occupancy is 60%. So, you know, 30 days in a month times 60% times your $200 a night. Does that cover your mortgage payment and, you know, all your utilities? That's a really easy, easy way to factor in whether it's, it's going to make sense. And then there's a, a main hub called Guesty, G-U-E-S-T-Y, Guesty. And that links everything. So we link it to our Airbnb, our VRBO, our Price Labs, and our 
property management company. It's it's all synced. It's crazy. Something that concerns me, and maybe you can help me work through this, is um, I too would like to invest out of state. Do I need a team there? Like, do we, do you rely more on your property manager? Do you rely more on the real estate agent that helped you? Like, who's your like resource when you're not there? We ended up finding a property management company. Now I manage all the bookings. They can handle that, but there's a fee for that, um, which digs into your profit. So, and being the realtor, it's not hard for me, but they do all of our cleaning, our lawn maintenance, all of our like sheets, wash and fold. Um, and then they have a handyman. So there have been times where a guest has stayed and one of them like broke off the handle on the toilet, for an example. And we've called them and there's obviously a fee that comes in that and it's a huge cost but for us it's our only option we're out of state and I trust them and they're so great like when they went in they're like guests seem totally normal (laughs) like uh, house looked fine you know they definitely like give us updates um they when they do our lawn every week and they'll tell us if they see anything or whatever um so as far as that, if you can find a property management team that you trust, now it comes with a premium. Obviously, you're paying for their services, um, but that's how we did it. Like I know property management charges, like on a standard home, they can be anywhere between like five and per- five and eight percent. Correct. Right. Yeah. Your gross rents. Yep. So how do they do it on short term rent? It's gonna blow your mind. Are you ready for this? this is why I'm doing all the bookings. <laughs> the average property manager for a short term rental takes thirty percent because three zero 30 percent because think about it they are booking someone in and out at least usually once a week um when you have a short-term rental people come on the weekends and then say someone comes for a work conference two days during the week so when you have a short-term or long-term rental excuse me they're being booked what they're doing a tenant once a year maybe six months maybe someone breaks their lease so it's 30 percent what do you do to promote your property to make sure that it gets rented out what i do is actually really simple it's cute i decorated it cute i got professional photos get professional photos please of your short-term rentals if you're gonna have one um so that's a huge thing but if we're not booked like say for an example by a tuesday i'm not booked that weekend i'll drop the prices i rather have someone in there than booked at a discount then no money at all so i'm constantly watching our calendar and going through and um and you can like price labs that side i was telling you about automatically populates what your nightly rate should be based on like peak season or whatever uh but you can go in and auto change anything so if we're not booked i'll drop the price so brand new airbnb you need more reviews you need to become a super host therefore you get more eyes and attention and attraction to your property and you can actually bring the price back up. Yeah, yeah. And people get sketched out when you don't have reviews on Airbnb, which everyone starts somewhere, of course, if it's a new, but people are like, okay, you know, I'm bringing my whole family, I'm inside this home, like why aren't there reviews? Um, So whatever you have to do to get your reviews up and going. And the other thing that Airbnb is huge on is response time. Part of the qualifications for being a super host is responding within an hour to your notifications. So I get a ding. Um, I have, you know, a te- I get a text and the email from Airbnb when I have an inquiry to make sure that I answer. California specifically, not a great te- uh, landlord friendly state. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, there's rent control in some areas. Yeah. So would it be smarter to actually turn your house into a, let's say you want to leave your home and buy something else. Would it be smart to turn that into an Airbnb versus a long-term rental? We looked at that and I, when I looked on airdna.co, I was shocked at how much Airbnbs were making in Livermore. And we looked at that if we move out of this current house. I was shocked at what whether we turn it into a long-term rental or Airbnb. Maybe that's because there's not a lot of hotel options in, in Livermore, but we could make a lot of money airbnb it too. So those are always options to look at. And I would just say, do your research. The main thing deciding if you want to do an Airbnb or a long-term rental is how much headache do you want? How much do you want to be managing it? Because I am dealing with inquiries daily um, for my Airbnb. And if you're someone who has like a full-time job and a family, if that's not something you want to take on, then I would recommend long-term rental. 
Okay. Cool. And if people want to connect with you, where can they get you? They can connect with me at AE Sells RE on Instagram. All my phone number's on there. There's a link that you can send me a direct DM um, or my email, but just go through Instagram is what I check the most. Um, and I'll, I'll connect with you through there. So I appreciate you, Matt, taking the time and having me on here and chatting. It's always, always great chatting with you. I leave with so many gems. 